Hello, everyone. Good morning and welcome to uh, Fanshawe College's School of Information Technologies International Open House. Uh, my name is Saurabh Malhotra and I'll be your moderator for this morning. Before we start the session, uh, I am going to play a short video for you to give you a sense of our awesome School of Information Technology. I will request all the panelists to turn off their video at this stage, and I will share a short video with all our attendees. You come into Fanshawe and you're learning a technical skill, you're learning something very hands-on, and then once you've got the basics down, uh, you have the opportunity with the co-op program to jump in and get real-world experience. When you're in co-op, you're in the workplace working on the latest technologies and exactly what's being used right now. As I started to meet the Fanshawe students, I really recognized that they were coming out with a really fresh perspective of IT, but they're young enough to still have an open mind and, and, a, and an eager um, appetite for creating something that's new and innovative. As a co-op student, you walk into an environment where the, your employer is probably part of our program advisory council. And those program advisory councils actually help us design the curriculum. You're getting academics with tremendous academic experience, including doctorates, multiple master's degrees. They've also been in the field, and they've also practiced, and they also understand that you as a practicing professional don't just need to understand how something is done, but you're able to do it. Everything we do is somehow touched by information technology, whether it's data, whether it's systems, whether it's devices. So our programs are geared 100% to the environment we live in today. Good morning, uh, good evening, good afternoon for students joining us from across the world. Welcome to Fanshawe College's School of Information Technology uh, International <laughs> Open House. Uh, my name is Saurabh Malhotra and I will be your moderator for this morning. Um, we have an awesome panel of subject matter experts for our students here this morning. I'm really, really excited to uh, uh, introduce them to you. But before I do that, I do have a couple of questions and instructions for students joining us today. Uh, we will be taking questions. We will have a lot of time for questions, but we'll take the questions at the end. Uh, the questions we will take through the Q&A. Uh, so you will see a box called Q&A. Um, if you have questions, please put them there. But I think it's a good practice to listen to the presentation first because a lot of your questions would be answered in the presentation. Um, and then you can ask any questions that are remaining at the end of this session too. Uh, but first, what I'd like to do is I'd like to ask students to use our chat box to tell us which country are they joining us from this morning and what program have they applied to at Fanshawe? Because your professors, your dean would love to hear that from students. What program, what country uh, are students here from? So we already have people putting it in chat box, Bangladesh, mm -hmm. Vietnam, Israel here, and the students for web development office administration, health services, computer systems technology, an Indian student for information security management, a computer programmer analyst, technical systems analysis, um, Philippines, Russia, Costa Rica, Nigeria. Oh, it's coming in much faster than I can actually read. South Korea, a student for, from India, a student from Nepal for software testing. It's amazing. We have students from almost 100 countries joining us uh, for this session this morning. We have a student from Russia. Uh, amazing. Uh, we are so glad to have this diversity here. And um, without further ado, I would like to introduce your host and the Associate Dean for School of Information Technology, Dr. Dave Senani. Dr. Senani, welcome and thank you for hosting this session today. Thanks so much, Saurabh. Hello, everybody. Uh, Namaste, Jai Shri Krishna, Satsriya Kaal, Adab. Shalom, hola, and many other languages which I cannot speak, but uh, welcome everyone. It's really great to be with you here today. And for those of you who have already decided to make the trek and join us at Fanshawe, I want to wish you all the very best in your studies. 
For those of you who are still deciding, I hope that we will provide you more information to help you make your decision. So I'm looking at this as our first opportunity to meet, and with any luck, I will get to see some of you face to face, hopefully in the not too distant future. Uh, with me today, I'm, uh, I'm blessed to have uh, some of my great coordinators with me. So I have Professor Michael Feeney, who's the coordinator of the CPA and GDP program. He's waving. Professor Stuart Button, who is the uh, coordinator of ISM and NSA. I have Professor Michael Clarkson, who's the coordinator of the SST program, software testing. Professor Kathy Brahma, who is the uh, HSY health systems coordinator. And Professor Sandra Nobauer, who is the online coordinator. And she's the one right now who is of prime importance to us because she makes it all run for us. It helps us to navigate through some uncharted territory. So what I want to do is talk a little bit about our school. And maybe I can get sort of to change the slides for me. Thank you. So we're about 5,000 students strong. We sit at about 120 faculty members. And many of our faculty members are absolutely preeminent in their field. They are recognized nationally and internationally for their subject matter areas. And they bring a great wealth of experience and knowledge and uh, uh, background to the table. And they are able to, to translate and you know, present their material in the best possible way uh, and give you some real world examples to help you understand what it will be like in the workforce. We currently sit at about 15 programs with about five more planned over the next 18 months. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a bit. And we're distributed across two campus cur campuses currently, and we're a growing school. We are right now the second largest school on campus, and uh, we're, a, we're a fun group of people. We have some exciting programs. Uh, so we currently offer a certificate program, four diploma programs, three advanced diploma programs, and seven postgraduate certificate programs. And so what I'm going to do is try and give you a, a bit of a high-level overview on what, how those programs uh, work. And then I'm going to turn it over to my coordinators, and they're going to give you uh, some further detail on their specific program areas. So in the School of IT, we break our school down into an, a couple of areas of focus. So uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> so we uh, break it down into computer systems, web and software programming, security, office administration, and systems planning and management. So the first one is going to be the computer systems area. And that includes our computer tech, uh, systems technician program, computer systems technology program, and a new program that's going to launch in the fall called information technology infrastructure. So as you can see, those are a mix of graduate certificates, advanced diplomas, and diploma programs. And right now, I'm going to just uh, uh, gloss over it a bit like that, but I will loop back and talk a little bit more about CTN, CTY, and ITI uh, as we go forward. So typically, the, the topics we cover include operating systems, networking, database servers, web servers, and some project management. And typically, our graduates go out into the field in the areas of technical support specialists. They may work as network administrators, network support specialists, field service technicians, network user support, and computer systems technicians. So those are typically the kinds of careers that you can expect to, to have available to you uh, once you graduate from our programs. In addition, we offer some certifications uh, in, in concert with those programs. And so you can apply for and get your Cisco certification, your Microsoft certification, a Linux certification, and also a VMware certification. And I know this may be just a very little bit of information right now, but I will loop back on all these three programs uh, towards the end and give you a little bit more detail about them. Okay, so moving on to the web and software programming area. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, we include programs there called internet applications and web development. Our CPA, computer programmer analyst, and Mike uh, Feeney is gonna talk uh, more about that and game development. Mike is also going to speak about that program also, and that's more of an advanced programming graduate certificate. So those programs include a lot of the, the typical things you might expect. So LAMP, XML, the, the programming languages C, C++, JavaScript, C Sharp, PHP, Python. We do a fair bit of work on databases and SQL. Obviously, security is of prime importance across many of our programs, across all of our programs, and so we talk a bit about that in, uh, in this area. 
And again, project management. What you'll find is project management seems to be a common thread along, among many of our programs. And as an IT professional, obviously, uh, the focus is going to be on your ability to, to take on a project, to manage it, and to hopefully finish it on time and under budget, as they say. So our careers for these programs include the classic ones, web developer, a junior or senior program, programmer, and a database developer as well. OK, moving on, we go on to the security area. Uh, obviously, this is of, of uh, coming into uh, much more uh, of an important status these days. And our programs include the cybersecurity program, which is an advanced diploma of three years with a co-op option. And we'll talk a little bit more about what co-op means. We have information security management, which is a grad certificate of eight months in duration. And then network and security architecture, which is another eight month grad certificate. But this one has a co-op program as part of that. that. And Professor Button will be speaking about that uh, as we go forward also. OK, our typical uh, topics are obviously lots and lots about security. So the security planning, the ethical hacking, the focus on ethical, the risk analysis, digital forensics, web security, network security monitoring, the IT service management, and again, project management typically focus more on the IT sector. Our careers are, as you can expect, information security analyst, manager, threat and risk of vulnerability security specialist. So how do you prevent all those bad things from happening to your systems? An IT security architect, information security auditor, and a network security analyst. So as you might expect, the, with the focus being on the security aspects and you know, trying to button things down, our careers are really focused on how do you support those systems and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, prevent uh, any sort of unauthorized access to them. OK, um, office administration. So this is a program that offers us uh, uh, a fair bit of, of breadth. We have uh, three subspecialties within it. One is the Office Administration General, which is a, a postgraduate certificate of eight months in duration. We have the Office Administration Executive, aimed more at the, uh, at the uh, office management side of things. Uh, it's a two-year diploma. And then we have an Office Administration Medical, or Health Services, focused on the, on the health side of, uh, of office administration. And it's a two-year program with a placement option. Typically, we go through the standard kind of stuff in an OA environment. So the tools, so Microsoft Office Suite, accounting, so QuickBooks and Simply Accounting. We go through a fair bit on the human resources side of things, on uh, creating and delivering presentations. Again, project management from the point of view of how do you run an office. Uh, on, the, on the health side, we go through the medical terminology and transcription, patient scheduling and billing, as well as medical databases. Our careers range from everything from administrative assistance to front desk people, to accounting, to customer service representatives, to office coordinators and managers, through to medical secretaries, medical team assistants, records clerks, and also medical office coordinators. So this is a, a large program for us, uh, and uh, we, we tend to place our students uh, in a number of different uh, areas in the healthcare and uh, general administration areas as well. Certainly with uh, the advent of, of COVID and what's happening right now, we've had uh, lots of requests for, for assistance from our programs and from our, our students in the OA area in terms of being either frontline uh, office administration people or people on, who can manage and understand the administrative side of the triage and the, and the disease pandemic. Okay, <clears throat> moving on to systems planning and management. We have uh, th uh, three programs uh, listed in there. One is called TSS, it's our Technical Systems Specialist, and it's a graduate certificate program. And it is, is the, one of the new programs, along with information technology infrastructure, <clears throat> pardon me, that are going to launch this fall at the college. And so it's the idea of being a bridge between the business and the technical side. So being able to understand a business problem and then being able to craft a, uh, an IT solution to help facilitate solving that problem. It's a great new program. Some of you who have been keeping up in the IT industry with what the trends are know that analysts and specialists are always in great demand. And so we're looking forward to be able to launch this terrific program, which is going to be that bridge between the business and the IT side. <clears throat> Software information systems testing <clears throat> holds a special place for me because I started at Fanshawe College as a professor in that program. And Professor Mike Clarkson is going to be talking about that a little further on. It's also a graduate certificate program, so eight months duration. And it has a co-op program as part of that as well. 
Health Systems Management. Kathy is going to talk about that as well. It's also a graduate certificate program of eight months in duration. And uh, I'll, I'm going to leave that to, to Kathy to talk about. Um, moving forward, uh, in terms of the areas we cover, systems design and analysis, the end user experience. So many of you have cell phones. I'm sure all of you have cell phones and various devices. Some will be Android, some will be iPhones. How did you make those choices? What were some of the considerations you had in terms of how you chose the devices and the IT uh, uh, toys around you? So why did you pick an Apple? So when we go through the end user experience side, we talk about what some of those user preferences are and what some of the decision points are around why we choose certain products and how we test them. Obviously part of IT, whether it's project management or systems analysis is the requirements gathering phase. So when we're going through the standard SDLC, we're doing some analysis, some planning, some design, some implementation. So one of the first steps is obviously gathering those requirements. We're trying to draw a box around the user's problem and trying to figure out what are the considerations we're going to need when we, when we take into account all the particular restraints and requirements that the project may have. Operating systems, we talk about uh, you know, the, the finer points of operating systems, databases, we get into a little bit about business intelligence and analytics. So how do we craft those dashboards? How do we derive some meaning from our data? How do we take data and create information? How do we take that information and create knowledge and wisdom and so forth? And then the project management side obviously is how do we make sure that uh, when we take on an IT project, it's going to be resourced properly. It's going to uh, provide the right solution to the users and it's going to actually add value to the organization. The careers for these folks are everything from software architect to quality assurance tester, technical systems analysts, uh, MIS analysts, management information systems, and also business intelligence analysts. Those are typically the kinds of, uh, of uh, endeavors that we got into on that. So I'm going to just uh, turn my attention for a few minutes and talk a little bit before I hand it over to, to Mike Feeney. I know he's... Uh, he's uh, He's destroyed that he's not going to get to, to speak right now, but we'll hand it over to him in a second. I'm going to talk a little bit about the CTN CTY programs, so computer systems technician and computer systems technologist, and then a little bit about uh, ITI and TSS and maybe cyber. So uh, I'm going to ask you to just sort of sit and listen right now because we don't have uh, any slides for these. I wanted to just uh, have a chance to talk to you about these programs. So CTN, the Computer Systems Technician, is a two-year diploma program. Program, It's aimed at people who are uh, interested in the service and support areas, and it's not a co-op program. So it's a, a two-year program of, of, of academics. The CTY program, Computer Systems Technology, is a three-year advanced diploma. It has a co-op component to it. It's also aimed at people interested in the service side, but also in the network uh, systems administrator side of things. So uh, these programs uh, help our students get into frontline uh, support and liaison with an IS team. Uh, there are certifications associated with it. So the Cisco certification, the CCNA, as well as the Microsoft Certified Solutions Associate, MCSA. Uh, our students learn about supporting operating systems, about networking, about web server support, databases, service desk management, disaster recovery strategies, and our careers are typically tech support, network installation support, computer systems technician, network administrator, those kinds of things. On the CTY side, it's a, as I said, it's a three-year program. It has a co-op component to it. So the co-op component is typically a term of about four months in duration. And our students go out into the workforce and they actually work for a, for a company on a paid basis. Uh, and they accrue some, some very valuable Canadian experience. So those of you who understand uh, a bit of the game here, we, uh, we our companies and our employers here like to hire people who have a little bit of Canadian experience. We are, are actually in a very fortunate place because typically IT is IT is IT. So whether you're developing and coding and uh, building IT systems in India or the Middle East or Russia or South America or Canada, the tools and techniques are typically the same. The client interaction may be a little different, but the things you learn are going to be the things you're going to be learning here or there. However, we, we like to have, our companies like to have uh, folks with some Canadian experience. So the co-op uh, program is extremely valuable to our students in that it affords you at least a four-month look at its minimum. And sometimes some programs have 
multiple co-ops and Mike is going to talk about that. Mike Feeney will talk a little bit about that as well. So our co-ops give our students a chance to get into the real world, to build some familiarity with a Canadian company. And it gives the company, equally important, gives the company an opportunity to understand what you are like as a student. And so what we find in our school and in our programs, many of our students get hired full-time as a result of the co-op programs. But one of the caveats is that a co-op program at the college and in many colleges is not a guaranteed thing. It's still a competitive process. So we will facilitate the process by inviting companies in to offer or to post their postings. But then we, and we certainly encourage the students to apply for those, but then the rest of the process happens between the company and the student. So it's like any other competitive job seeking process where you put your credentials forward, you present yourself, and then if the company takes you on, you have a co-op. Um, so having said that, the CTY program does have a, have a, uh, a co-op program. And uh, the nice thing about CTN and CTY is that our students have a combination of some academic experience and some hands-on experience in, in the real world. So those students are typically well sought after, they're valuable assets to a company, and uh, we find that the program uh, generates a lot of interest in our students. So CTY typically explores how you design, how you install, troubleshoot, maintain enterprise level systems, uh, and it also gives you uh, the ability to provide that high level support to various organizations. Okay, um, so everything from managing uh, operating systems to networking <clears throat> to cloud services, Active Directory, virtualization, data management, web server support, uh, messaging services, securing information systems. Uh, so uh, typically you can work as a network manager, a systems manager, network support specialist, those kinds of things. Uh, again, the certifications are the, the typical ones, the Cisco certification, CCNA, and the Microsoft uh, uh, Certified Solutions Assistant, the MCSA. Um, for the cyber program, let me spend a little bit of time on that. It's a three-year uh, advanced diploma. And uh, it, uh, sorry, sorry, I don't have the slides there for you. Oh, there you go, okay. Um, so it provides our students with sort of foundational information security skills and the knowledge to be successful in the IT security industry. So we talk about information security, we talk about ethics, we talk about network management, analysis, programming, scripting, operating systems, and database management as an example. So it's not simply, we're, want, we're not going to teach you how to hack into systems on your very first day. At, in cybersecurity, but we're going to teach you about some of the fundamental core concepts and assets around how systems work, how you secure them, and uh, and going forward from there. So uh, our our courses focus on technology, on hacking methodology, on the prevention, on uh, policies, on uh, regulations and jurisdiction, uh, and we recognize that security is not just a product that can be purchased afterwards but it's a core set of, of skills and technologies that has to be there in, right from the get-go in terms of the design of systems going forward. And so we, we take our students through this. The first two semesters in the program are really uh, knowledge intensive. So it's a, a fair bit of hard work to, to master some of the concepts. We, get, we then go through network operations, operating systems, cryptography, authentication, web security, uh, and then we build on that in the subsequent terms. We go through security mechanisms. We go through the attack vectors, the ethical hacking, the use of those tools. How do you put policies and protocols into place? Uh, and that typically talks about uh, the whole gamut of security for cyber. Okay, uh, information technology infrastructure is a new program for us. And uh, we're very excited about that program. It's aimed as a one-year program. Uh, for us, and it's going to be focused on getting everyone some core skills in the IT infrastructure. It's meant as a, a bit of a, of a, a foundation level program for us. So you can take that as a one year grad certificate and then move on to any of our other programs. So ISM, NSA, SST, TSS, what have you. And the ITI is really aimed at giving you those practices and skills in the support of IT infrastructure. So we, we give our students some, some great knowledge and experience working with Windows systems and Linux, Windows server administration, virtualization technologies, a bit of obviously the network and security uh, infrastructure. Uh, we do a lot of hands-on kind of stuff with the program. 
and uh, our careers are really they are our folks get involved in the, uh, employed in the computer support area either as desktop or application support uh, desk technicians computer technicians they're employed by computer hardware manufacturers or retailers software developers call centers in IT uh, and all through the public and private sector so again that's a new program for us uh, and uh, we're looking forward to getting that rolling as a, as a foundation level or an entry level program that would facilitate uh, student success in our other programs. Our TSS program as a technical systems specialist is really the IT analyst program in our, in our uh, repertoire of programs at the college. Uh, it is the bridge between the business and the technology side of things. So it's everything from, if you think of the software development life cycle, it's all aspects of that from an analyst point of view. So we're looking for people who can bridge those two disciplines uh, we're still aiming it more at the technical side. It's not a business focused program. It's a technical focused program. So it is not a business analyst program. The college already has a business analyst program, but this is a program that will allow you as a student to understand the business context, understand the business logic and understand how to uh, create a solution for a business challenge or need or problem, and then to craft an IT solution that will help to facilitate the solution of that kind of problem. So the skill sets we hope to engender are everything from the requirements gathering, to coding, to document preparation, to presentations. Communication is going to be a, a, a critical feature in this program, uh, but we want someone who can understand both the business side and the IT side, and then be able to, uh, to not only communicate effectively in a business context, so whether you're in a boardroom with the CEO and the C-level executives, the CTO, the CIO, et cetera, but also be able to come back and talk to the IT directors, the programmers, the coders. So be able to speak both those languages and be able to be that bridge or that translator between both sides to create an effective IT solution. Uh, it's an exciting new program. We're in the midst of, of uh, sorting out all the curriculum and the courses. Uh, we have everything from embedded systems to things like Raspberry Pi to uh, more traditional operating systems. We're going through some of the business analysis kind of ideas, the business intelligence, the analytics, the data mining, uh, as well as some of the core concepts around requirements gathering and uh, interface design, uh, operating systems. Uh, it's going to be a super program. We're really excited about that. And so we're looking forward to, uh, to admitting a new batch of students. Maybe some of you will be part of that group in September. Okay, um, I think at this stage of the game, I'm going to hand it off to uh, people much better than me to talk about their specific programs. And so without further ado, I'm gonna hand you off to Mike Feeney. And uh, Saurabh, I'm gonna re rely on you to let us know when you want us to field questions or when there are issues we need to deal with right away. But uh, without further ado, here's Mike. Hey, I've been trying to answer questions on the side. That's why I'm fabulous. fabulous. I'm not playing Candy Crush or whatever. Um, yeah, so CPA and CPA two and three are the same program. Uh, a number of years ago, the the uh, government, the, our provincial government, uh, decided to change the name. So I just want to point that out because there's some uh, confusion about that. So the after a couple of years of meetings, they decided that the name computer programmer analyst should be changed to computer programming and analysis. So there was the parade. It was amazing anyway, but it's basically, it is literally the same program. It's just got a slightly different name. Um, so in case you're curious about that, um, if you could zip to the next slide, I guess there's been a couple of questions about uh, the difference between the web program and the CPA, the three-year program. Um, so if you could skip to the next slide. Oh, and I'm Michael Feeney. Anyway, um, so yeah, so the CPA two or three, I'll, I'll just call it CPA. It's the three year computer programming course. If you want to be a programmer, that's what you take. Um, uh, Dave mentioned embedded. We, we, we don't do a lot of, we do a little bit of embedded, but it's mainly uh, sort of middle typical programming jobs. Our, our students have a huge variety of placements. So we have to cover a really broad range of things. Uh, you saw the list of programming topics there. Whatever is, uh, whatever is sort of sexy and current in the industry right now. There's a few fundamental courses like languages like C and C++ that are underpin the other ones, but we're always trying to hit the 
the mark of what's actually current and not chase, uh, you know, chase RTL for whatever the, the latest trend is. For example, uh, Python has now been included um, uh, because that's become in demand, basically. Our, our industry partners, like their focus groups, ask for that. CPA two and three is three years plus a year of co-op. The co-op is interspersed with classes. So you take three terms, so uh, a year of classes and then you're out on co-op. So that's when you're kind of useful as a programmer. Um, there's the two intakes if you start either September or January. Um, now, I don't, I don't expect you to memorize this, but the, it sort of shows how it alternates between work and academic. The other thing is even though it's uh, you know three years, you actually finish uh, halfway or at the beginning of your fourth year, just the way the co-op works. The other thing I want to point out is um, uh, are, there's a lot of prerequisites that carry through. So you'll notice that there's a duplicate term from first and second. Um, some students think it's like a do-over and that courses are offered all the time. They're not necessarily offered all the time. So, so just, uh, you know, just get that A plus and then you don't have to worry about it. But um, if you go back one more slide to the IWD program, um, I used to coordinate that for a number of years and now uh, Martin coordinates that. It's a smaller program. It came about because we used to have a two-year junior programmer course many years ago, and we found that the industry didn't want that. They, they, what was happening is the two-year programmers and the three-year programmers would go out for work, and no one would hire the two-year people. So we decided to specialize, and at the time it was web or mobile, and uh, mobile's now becoming its own program. Uh, but so now it basically the point the people who take the two-year program are either wanting, they basically want a two-year program for speed or they want to only focus on web. So the CPA students, the computer program analysts do do a lot of web, uh, but it, they do a lot of other things in addition to web. So I don't know if that answers a, a bunch of questions. Um, uh, maybe if you could zip forward to the, the co-op. Um, the, I don't know how important that is to, to you, but uh, the, my advice is that anytime you can get a, a placement or a co-op in a program, that's the, that's the way to go, right? Uh, students learn a lot of, on the on the job, and the whole point of it is, you know, to get you employed. That's really the 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 goal there. You end up with a year of work experience. Um, if you want to email me, maybe if you have specific questions about, you know, what places hire people or what kind of jobs they do, that's fine. It is a job in, in Ontario and in Canada. You have to be paid for it to be called a co-op. So you'll hear terms like placements or that sort of thing. Um, you can't call a thing a, a co-op unless it's paid. The reason I mentioned that is it's not a guarantee. Like you still have to interview, right? It's still an actual job. So if you, if you are, uh, if you don't really, <laughs> I, I think you know what I'm trying to say. You still have to earn your place as a, as a job, but most of our students get jobs. And uh, yeah, um, I don't know if I want to say anything about that. Maybe skip to the, the laptop uh, thing. We we used to have years ago, back in ancient times, there was labs, uh, but the, the um, students live on their laptops. Right now we're using Windows 10. Um, that's just the, the easiest uh, way to have the, the most access to, to all computers. Uh, some students say, well, can I bring a Mac to class? Absolutely, but it's got to run Windows. Um, it, I, it's amazing that students will sort of point out to me that there, other, there is other operating systems out there. Like, I, I, so shockingly, I am aware of that. So, but we still use Windows. So if, if you can't run Windows, well, that's you got to use Windows so uh, it doesn't have to be a super awesome laptop but it should be pretty good like it uh, you don't need some million dollar gaming laptop unless you want to the other thing is since you're lugging it around hopefully when the pandemic's over and you can actually go to class um, you might want to reconsider lugging around a 50 pound laptop uh, but that's your that's your own choice some students will get two laptops over the course of the program uh, but that's again that's up to you um, yeah, uh, the, it, it, some of the terms for, for CPA and, and the web program, uh, in case you don't know, the terms for programming, it tends to be front, middle, back end programming. So front end is more what the user touches. So buttons, design, that sort of thing. Uh, middle is anything in the middle and back end tends to be, you know, databases, the cloud, stuff you don't see. So IWD, the two-year web program, tends to focus on sort of front, middle, 
It's sort of what user facing programming and then CPA tends to focus more on the back. If you're into gaming, um, some of you may be aware that computers can play games. I know that's, that's news to everyone, but um, there is a post-grad program. So it's eight months long. It's sort of a, a brutal boot camp sort of thing. The idea is that um, it's portfolio based. It's for people who are trying to get into the game industry as a programmer. Um, if you're trying to get in, but you just need to bump yourself up just that little bit more, this is what it's for. Um, I don't know if, can, if I can share my screen, but th this might be the, the easiest way to, uh, to, let's see if I can do that. Can I share the screen? No, I can't. Okay, well, don't worry about it. <clears throat> there is a link. If anyone's interested, you can email me and I can send you a link to the current uh, portfolios or the final projects that the students did after eight months. They literally start with drawing a single triangle on the screen and then make a game engine. Uh, it's the vast majority of it is in C and C++. We're not going to teach you how to program. Uh, some uh, students um, tend to land into, into the game development course with no programming experience. That's not, not good. Like you need to have some experience. It doesn't have to be specifically in C and C++, but that's definitely an advantage. Um, but you, you definitely need to know how to, how to program. We're just trying to teach you how to program games and stuff. Um, like, I don't know if you can see behind me, I got an Xbox and a PlayStation 4. We program on PlayStation 4s um, at the end. We don't use a game engine like Unity. We actually make the whole thing from scratch. Uh, it's a lot of time pressure. It's high expectations. My comment to that is if, if you don't want high pressure and high expectations, you probably don't want to be in the game industry, right? Like, Hate to be blunt, but that's kind of how it is. Um, uh, is that, uh, what else do you need to know about that? Yeah, maybe if you, there's a bunch of little stuff up there. Yeah, you work on, you basically make your own in engine. If you're not sure what a game engine is, um, it's like Unity, Unreal, that kind of thing. So instead of us using that, we make one. So we make something like Unity in eight months and then they demonstrate what their engine can do. The idea behind that is, is um, if you can make your own engine, then companies, obviously you can pick up whatever engine they're using. And if they're using their own custom engine and around London and area, like around Ontario, uh, the bulk of the companies around here use their own engine. So uh, they do the odd Unity or Unreal project, but most of them have their own custom engine. So you learning Unity is great, right? I don't discourage that, but that's a hard, hard uh, way to get into the industry on the technical side. <clears throat> um, what else do you need to know? Yeah, it's eight months long. There it is. Uh, there's most of the first semester leads to the second semester. This is similar to the computer programmer analyst and the web program. Um, I know some universities, you can sort of choose a number of courses, you know, pick 15 of these 60 courses and you graduate. Uh, the college system, generally tends to be different that way where there's a lot of prerequisites. So if you're failing courses, say in the first term, you're kind of stuck, you won't be able to take courses in the second term generally. Although some students have taken two years to do it. Uh, anything else you think I should add, Dave? No? No, I think that's good. That's covered it. Cool, thanks. Hi everybody, Stuart, uh, Stuart Button here. And uh, so I am the coordinator of the ISM or Information Security Management Network Security Architecture Programs. And next slide, please. The, uh, the programs are, as the title suggests, focus on information security. And there's two different programs. There is similarities between the two. So we do have courses that, uh, that are actually uh, the cross both programs, such as uh, CISSP prep and uh, and then there's a web security as well. So those those two programs courses cross both programs. But yeah, information they're both one year uh, graduate certificate programs. And the information security management focuses more on the management side of security. So you're looking at CISSP prep. You've got courses like IT auditing. Uh, those, uh, but there is also a technical element to those um, programs. Uh, or courses. And then the network security architecture focuses much more on the technical side. So we have courses in there that are such as the enterprise um, um, enterprise design. So we look at 
designing a network, designing the uh, designing the security around that network, and we we build up to that. We look at uh, also IT uh, ITSM or information uh, security. Uh, what is that? ITSM, uh, information technology service management. That's it. So we are we spend some time uh, work looking at uh, those. This is a very intensive eight month programs, both of them, and the one. Um, and we have a lot of students that actually start in one and actually transition to the uh, to the other as well. So that happens quite a bit. And we find that our students end up, next slide please. Uh, sorry, Stuart, can I interrupt you for a second there? I just have a note for all the panelists not to answer the questions through typing on Q&A because it just pops up for everyone during the session. Sorry for the interruption, Stuart. No worries. So. So we, these courses are, or the programs are very theory based, but we have a number of labs, activities and exercises and much as uh, Professor Feeney mentioned, uh, we, do every, we do most of this on, uh, on your laptops. So a laptop with a really, uh, with solid specifications is, is necessary for the program. There's also an element of writing and research in, uh, in, this, in these programs where we start out with the basics. We look at security as a whole Here's kind of the background of security, where it came from, and we ramp up very quickly into the practical side of, uh, of security as well. And again, as we mentioned, these are postgraduate programs, so you need you and you need a degree to come into these programs, but you also need some um, background in IT. So we look for we like to have students that have a, a networking background, even even a software background, but we have we have a diverse students with a very diverse backgrounds that come in and they're very successful in this program. Next slide, please. So one of the things about NSA that, uh, that differentiates it from ISM is there's a co-op element to that. And that co-op element, as has been previously mentioned, is four months. It happens during the summer. So it's because ISM runs all year round. So we have intakes into ISM in September, January and, uh, and May. Whereas for NSA, we only have intakes in, in uh, September and January. So NSA doesn't actually run through the summer. So that's where we actually put our, our co-op and it will always be in the summer in this particular program. Next slide. So some of the uh, career paths that we end up, we've got some programming, we have network design and support. We, uh, we have students that end up in the auditing and compliance side. So we have some students that, uh, that have ended up with, uh, and actually we've just had a student join uh, Fortinet. Uh, and they, uh, we've had students at uh, Deloitte, Emco, eCentire. And these are all diverse companies and they do a number of different diverse roles uh, throughout their careers at these companies. And as you're probably aware, the IT or security field is growing rapidly. So in Canada, and this stat is oh, about a month old, there were about 13,000, just over 13,000 IT security related jobs posted on Indeed uh, in Canada alone. So we're looking at a market that is growing exponentially and I think over the next five years, the stat is somewhere between two to four million IT security jobs. So if you're looking to come into I, ISM or NSA, you're coming into a, uh, into a program that can set you up for a really solid career opportunity uh, going forward. And that's it for me. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to our uh, open house, uh, virtual. Uh, I promise I won't be sending any viruses your way, at least that I don't know of. So uh, anyway, I'm the uh, coordinator of the Software and Information Systems Testing Program. It's a program that's been going for five years now, and we've uh, kind of tweaked it out a little bit. We're still constantly tweaking it. And um, it's one of those programs that uh, provides uh, an opportunity for students to get out there and actually do the software testing that uh, is uh, definitely in demand in our world today. Uh, more and more companies are adding to their uh, uh, quality assurance boards, if you will, or their, their departments to make sure that their software is actually functioning appropriately. And uh, our program fills that need out there for people. Can I go to the next slide? Uh, Ooh, there we go. Uh, so we actually look at uh, 
software from from all perspectives. Uh, it, it not only has to work, it has to do what it's supposed to do. Uh, it has to be uh, of good quality. Uh, we look at mostly software, but we, we discuss a little bit about the hardware as well. Uh, again, the quality assurance departments of companies around the, uh, the, the globe are uh, being increased to make sure that uh, uh, the software is working uh, appropriately. The last thing we need is software that uh, uh, doesn't allow an airplane to take off or land properly. We need uh, the software to be able to function and not cause problems. Uh, so we, we uh, ensure that the software and the systems are appropriately tested. It's not an end game type uh, program. What we're looking at is uh, testing software from its inception uh, all the way through its development, right through to the, uh, the actual release of the product and uh, the use of it in the, uh, the work world today. So again, not a separate phase. It's something that we do on a constant basis. Next slide. A little delay in reaction there. That's great. So, uh, so we do actually have uh, a, a fair amount of theory, uh, and uh, you know we get a lot of complaints sometimes that we don't do enough hands-on. But we do actually do quite a bit of hands-on. Uh, the 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 technology changes on a regular basis. We do what we can to keep up with that technology. So uh, as uh, new uh, testing tools come out, we, we introduce them, we talk about them, uh, we actually have hands-on, we show you how to use it, and uh, we do everything we can to, to make the experience as a software tester uh, rich and uh, useful to you, because at the end of the day, the whole idea is to get a job uh, that is uh, functional for the company, for you, and, and as a uh, uh, member of the, the team that you're going to be working with, uh, we want to make sure that you're capable. Uh, we do expect everybody to have a laptop computer uh, that meets uh, recommended specification. I think the next slide talks about that, if we can move to that. There we go. Oh, one more. There we go. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's a basic computer. It's a little bit more than the uh, sort of standard home computer that allows you to just get online. Uh, we need you guys to, uh, especially in today's day and age, have a camera. One of the reasons that a camera might be important uh, group work with uh, some of your fellow classmates. Uh, if we do not uh, get together face to face, you'll be doing a lot of uh, online uh, collaboration with uh, other classmates. Uh, you'll need to be able to communicate with them and it's nice to see who you're actually working with. Uh, so there's a whole list of specifications. If you actually log into fanshotc.ca, uh, you can actually go and find these specifications posted there. So I encourage everybody to do that. Uh, can we go back a slide? Now we'll look at the curriculum. Uh, the first uh, semester, we look at things like applied project management systems design. Uh, this is all preparatory, if you will, in terms of getting uh, programs up and running. Uh, we have a coding for test program or a course that, uh, that actually gives you some hands-on coding experience. Uh, I always like to use a, an example that you could probably get, uh, if you get 100 jobs, if you don't know how to program, uh, if you do know how to program, you can increase that to 1,000 possibilities. So having coding as uh, you know, one of your foundations uh, goes a long way in helping you understand the process for, for testing software. Test Methodologies is a course that uh, looks at uh, mostly theory, although there is some hands-on practical to that. Uh, but the whole idea behind test methodologies is to prepare you guys at the end of the day to uh, write the ISTQB exam. That's the International Software Testing Qualification Board exam foundation level. Uh, I've been asked uh, many times what people should do to prepare for software testing uh, before they come here. Uh, I always suggest maybe, uh, you know, go online, uh, check out some uh, introductory programming courses, uh, maybe in Java, in C Sharp, uh, C++, uh, learn a little bit about coding. Uh, but the big thing is to maybe go on to the ISTQB website and look at some of their uh, nomenclature, some of the uh, descriptions of what they do, and you know, familiarize yourself uh, with that. Uh, Dave uh, Sinani talked about end user experience not too long ago. Uh, and uh, we have an entire course on that. Uh, it's a pretty interesting course. Uh, and again, it goes about how do you decide, you know, whether or not a piece of software is functional? Is it intuitive? Is it something that people are going to want to use? And so on. 
Uh, once you've completed the first semester, you move into second semester, we have uh, security testing. Uh, that's always important to make sure that people can't hack into your program. Uh, automated test tools, that's where we, do, we introduce these uh, testing methodologies uh, that can be done in an automated fashion because if you did everything manually, it would take you about 20 years to get a, a piece of software out into the public. And by that time, somebody else has already beaten you to it. So uh, we, we do spend a lot of time on automated test tools. Non-functional testing, again, another uh, uh, necessary uh, course that, that talks about uh, how uh, your software functions in different environments. Uh, testing for development is a continuation on coding for tests. In other words, there's a programming uh, aspect to it uh, where we look specifically at how we test in the process of developing software. And the capstone project is one where we take everything we learn and we actually do uh, what you would do in the real work world when it comes to testing software. Uh, there's some preliminary courses, uh, graduate success strategies, uh, teaching you how to be successful as a student. Uh, communication is very important. Uh, the way you communicate in Vietnam, in uh, India, in uh, some of the other countries may be a little bit different than the way we communicate here in Canada. So that helps point out some of the differences. And, and then there's a co-op education, employment prep, teaching you how to write a resume, uh, how to uh, present yourself in the... Uh, in an interview process. And uh, that's necessary for those of you that want to go out and get a job as a software tester. And uh, we can't stress how important it is uh, to you that uh, if you're, you're taking a course like software testing, if you can get a co-op position, and again, you have to earn it, you have to present yourself and show that you're the person that the company wants to hire. But those that actually get a, a co-op, tend to find a job with that company or a related company uh, immediately upon graduation. So I don't know if I kept my five minutes, uh, kept within my five minutes here, but uh, I think I did a, you know, sort of a Reader's Digest version of this. Great, thanks Mike. Maybe I'll, uh, we can hand it over to Kathy. All right. So good morning, uh, afternoon, evening, whatever the time is in your time zone and welcome to the open house. Um, it's exciting to be a part of, of this open house uh, virtually for you. Uh, I'm the coordinator of the health systems management program and the, um, so we can just go right into the first slide there. The program is a one year post-grad. So uh, students come into the program already with a degree or a diploma. Um, there are two semesters with a total of 13 courses. Uh, the, the program is focused on uh, the field of health systems management, health information management. In Canada, it's relatively uh, young or it, it, it's relatively recent that all of the uh, patient records and information have been uh, digitized and and because of that uh, there is now a need for people who can work with that data make uh, meaning from the data and uh, present that data in a way that assists the decision makers in the health environment here in Canada. So um, the emphasis is on the administrative, managerial, and systems components that relate to electronic health records. Um, so in the program, you're going to be using a lot of critical thinking to, uh, to determine what the data means and, and what it means in the decision-making uh, process. You'll be um, applying uh, uh, your critical thinking skills to problems that are presented even by uh, some of the employers that are involved with us in the program. Um, there's a, in your final semester, there's a capstone project and we work closely with some of our employers uh, to assist them with solving problems related uh, to the health systems management program. So the courses uh, it, within the program uh, provide a couple of things. They provide a, a broad overview of the Canadian healthcare system, uh, 
what what the system is, the um, legislation uh, and laws governing uh, the healthcare system in Canada, the privacy laws, all of those which may well be different from your country of origin. So there is that focus on the Canadian health system. And then, and then we drill down uh, into uh, courses such as the electronic patient record. So what does that record look like? And in that process, you learn a little bit about how do we code uh, so the information coding process um, so that uh, the, uh, the activity can be billed uh, within the Canadian health system and the billing can take place. Uh, there's legal and ethical issues that uh, relate to the extraction, storage, and dissemination of information. Uh, and then there's um, a project management course as well, uh, so that you can uh, work on a project team uh, solving problems within the health system. So it's, it's a broad overview. Our students tend to come into the program with a solid, usually solid medical background. So we have a lot of, a lot of doctors, a lot of dentists, nurses, um, specialists in the healthcare industry. We also have a lot of people coming into the program with an IT background. Both of those uh, will be beneficial uh, to you as you work your way through the program. So there's a, a number of areas within the healthcare world here in Canada where the skills that you learn in the health systems management program can be applied. So if you are more of a clinical hands-on uh, kind of person, then you can focus your, um, your efforts on finding employment in the clinical areas, uh, decision support, clinical documentation, where you would be more involved uh, clinically. Uh, there's also health system specialist areas, so you could work within departments, uh, you would work uh, perhaps in records and information as a coordinator, policies and procedures, developing those around uh, data and security and, and uh, that kind of thing, uh, managing data. Could also work in a solutions department where, um, where you work with uh, teams to actually solve problems uh, that relate to the gathering of and dissemination of information or even determining from the information you've gathered that, you know, gee, if we did this differently, then our results would be improved. So uh, the solutions area uh, would be solving all kinds of uh, problems within the health system. And you would see some of those with some of the employers that we work with in that capstone project as well. Um, or if you have, if you've come in with a, a broader uh, base of experience already in the healthcare world, uh, you could uh, work more in the coordination and management end uh, within the healthcare system. So really where you go with the program depends on the background and experience you're coming into the program with. So don't ever lose sight of that that what you're bringing into the program is going to be very important when you tie that together with the skills you've learned in the health systems management program and then start searching uh, for, uh, for work in that area. So you wanna go on to the next slide. So um, within Canada, we have a national occupational code system uh, that lists the types of jobs uh, in the country. And so in the presentation that you'll have access to afterwards, there is a, a link to the code. So when you're searching, you would uh, search for a, a large number of different codes. One example is database analysts and data administrators. Keeping in mind that because it's the world of IT, that database analyst and data administrator would be required in practically any industry, not just the healthcare world. So, so there are skills that can be applied in numerous areas. 
There's also a website, the Working in Canada website, that is a good resource for labor market information. So if you're looking at this program and wondering where it can lead in terms of employment, it might help to do a little bit of research uh, with those websites uh, that can show you the types of jobs and the uh, income associated with those jobs. All right. And then even beyond the health systems management program, there are paths that you can take um, to qualify for additional certification. In Canada, there's an organization called CHIMA, uh, the Canadian Health Information Management Association. Uh, there's also COACH. There are two Canadian organizations that offer a national certification. Our program itself is not a certified program. It is an eight month two semester program, uh, but you uh, may have the opportunity to transfer credits um, with them or to have direct entry into one of their programs uh, for that national certification. Some of the healthcare institutions in Canada now are requiring uh, certifications, but what often happens is you get hired in more of an entry level position and then you begin that process of becoming certified with the assistance of your employer. Many of our HSY graduates go on to a second postgraduate certificate at Fanshawe, and that could be the in, uh, information security management program within our own school, um, any of the certificate programs within our own school, if it's the IT side of things that you're mostly interested in. Uh, we also have grads that go on to project management and operations management, okay? So, um, so keep that in mind when you're, when you're looking um, uh, for the programs that you're interested in. Uh, do a little bit of research in terms of where that'll lead you as well. And you can always get in touch with me if you have further questions. Thank you. Thanks, good Kathy. Morning. Sandra, do you wanna? Yes, say? good morning. Good morning, yeah. everyone. Um, afternoon and good evening, depending on where you're at right now. Um, welcome to Fanshawe College. And my name is Sandra Neubauer and I'm the e-learning coordinator in the school. I teach in the school as well. Um, my, my role today is to try to help you understand a little bit more about um, e-learning in the School of Information Technology. So next slide, please. Uh, one of the things I wanted to start with was to address some of the questions that I think some of you might have right away. So what does it mean to be online? In terms of thinking about online study in the School of Information Technology, we um, use a really robust learning management system. Um, some of you may be familiar already with our Fanshawe Online. And Fanshawe Online is supported on the back end by D2L. Some of you might know about that learning management system. So in terms of thinking about studying online, know that we've got the technology behind what we do to support your learning. Um, and most importantly, we've got the people, right? You've met some of those faculty um, and professors this morning that are behind those courses supporting you. So I think that's one really important message I'd wanna share with you this morning. Students often ask, when I'm studying online, do I have to log in at certain times? And generally the answer is no. Most of our online courses are offered asynchronously, so you don't need to be live online at specific times. However, um, with the recent pandemic, some faculty have scheduled in some synchronous sessions. So you may experience some synchronous sessions with your professors. You may also experience um, some live office hours. So many of our faculty are holding um, Zoom office hours, for example, or WebEx office hours to communicate with students. Uh, what kind of time should you be spending? Well, you'll know that when you study a course at Fanshawe, you will see that you have a certain number um, attached to each course. And that number represents the number of hours um, that that course is um, allotted. So for example, if you were studying a course face-to-face, -face, perhaps it would be three hours a week. So you'll want to pay attention to that on your schedule or on your timetable and make sure that your um, 
spending at least the amount of time that you see on your timetable when you're taking an online course. Uh, can you do courses at your own pace? Not really, because we want you to follow the curriculum and we want you to follow your faculty. So think of your professor or your faculty member as your guide on the side with online learning. So that person will be guiding you through the learning step by step and you will have assignments that you need to submit on specific deadlines, work that you need to get done by deadlines because we, we do all know as professionals, meeting deadlines is a really critical part of your professional life and becoming a professional. So in the School of Information Technology, we work with our students to help you learn about meeting deadlines and how to meet those in an online world when you may not be face-to-face uh, -face all the time. Now, in terms of thinking about getting started, all of the courses um, in the School of Information Technology, when you're working on them online, will have a module in them that will help students get started. So they're targeted to those the first week we know you have lots of questions in the first week and you need those answered. So your professors will have a getting started module that will actually help you know where to start in each of the courses that you might be enrolled in online. Next slide. Fanshawe also um, has a Fanshawe um, hub, we call it, and it's an online um, spot where you can go as a student to learn about how to get started to learn about how to be successful, to look at specific learner resources that may help you as an online learner, um, and also about how to get involved. It can be kind of tricky to get involved if you're studying online. So Fanshawe has worked on different ways to involve students virtually in different kinds of things related to campus life to help make you feel part of the Fanshawe community and the School of Information Technology when you're studying online. So just know that this resource is there for you and when you get a copy of the slideshow you'll notice the link is there. So you can go and take a look at the kinds of um, resources that are there to support students who are studying online and to help you feel like you're part of the campus, not just studying from a distance. Uh, one of the things you might be thinking about is, gee, am I even ready for this? So perhaps you haven't chosen your School of IT program, but you're thinking, I don't know, am I ready for that online kind of study thing? We have um, a readiness assessment that you can take. Uh, it's called Am I Ready? And there's a link there that you'll be able to access later. You can go and take a quick online assessment that will give you some ideas and feedback about what kind of um, skills and habits and so on will help you when you're studying online. So I recommend that if you're considering it, take that assessment and, because it can give you some really good feedback about the skills that you might wanna be working on and thinking about if you're about to study online. Uh, of course, there's some technical requirements uh, involved in studying online. Um, so those are listed at a website that you can take a look at. I won't take time to go over those now, but do know, of course, you need a, um, you know, a, a decent, um, consistent, reliable connection to the internet um, and a habit of regularly checking in on your courses. In terms of textbooks and resources, we provide those kinds of um, information available to you online. So our Fanshawe College Bookstore does a very good job of providing a website where students can go to look up their um, resources they need for each course in, a, in the online world. So you're able to look that up at a distance and then communicate with the bookstore if you're trying to access uh, resources for courses. In terms of online testing, students will often ask, oh gee, what's going to happen about testing? I'm going to say that it does vary depending on the course you're taking. Many of the assessments that you'll do may not be tests, they may be assignments that you're working on individually or perhaps you're working on in a virtual team. And then you would submit through the learning management system Fanshawe Online to your professor for assessment. Other times you may experience um, the need to take an online test with a virtual proctor, for example. So you would be taking that assessment live and being proctored um, from a distance. So there is a variety of ways that you might experience testing. Next slide, please. Uh, other resources that you might wanna look at that I want to point your attention to. Um, 
there are several different resources for students to support them. One of them is our Learning to Learn online toolkit or booklet. So the e-learning coordinators here at Fanshawe College have created a specific booklet for students and it's actually an e-book. So you can access that e-book at one of the links that you see on the screen now. And that booklet will help you understand um, what it means to learn online at Fanshawe, give you some of the resources and links that you'll need. And I think it's a really useful place to start if you're wondering about what learning to learn online is like if you haven't done it before. Just very quickly, um, we have several different resources. I spoke about uh, Fanshawe Online already. The, there's a site called My Fanshawe, and you may have some more questions about that later, and another site called Web Advisor. And I just bring those up quickly because sometimes online students um, are wondering why so many different resources and what do they all do. So I'm not going to take time now to explain those, but I can certainly answer your questions about my Fanshawe, why do we have this? Web Advisor, what is that thing? Which essentially is sort of your um, keep track of your courses and what you're taking and see your grade side. Um, Fanshawe Online, of course, being the spot where you'll do most of your, your learning and your interaction with your professors. Next slide, please. Um, you may or may, some of you may already know about um, an app called Brightspace Pulse. Brightspace is um, the name for the version of the learning management system or the Fanshawe online system that we're using here at Fanshawe. So I wanted everybody to know that we do have a mobile app um, that connects you directly to your Fanshawe online courses, um, especially for alerts. So students find that a very handy way to get course alerts for each of their courses while they're, you're on the go with your busy life, but you're also a student. You can use the Pulse app um, on a mobile device to be able to get alerts. So maybe your professor sending out alert about, hey, don't forget Friday's deadline at five o'clock. And you can have that alert come into a mobile device and monitor your courses that way. So it's certainly a, a tool and add on I think that Fanshawe offers that really helps students. Um, also know that we do have once you're a registered bona fide student, you will have access to software resources that um, all Fanshawe Online students have. So I think it's helpful to know that those resources are provided by Fanshawe College in order to support your learning because we know some of you may need operating systems, you may need Microsoft Office software, for example. So those supports are there to support you learning online. And of course you can download that software at a distance from wherever you might be. Next slide, please. Um, I'm going to leave it at that and I know that you probably are going to have questions. You've been listening, I think, for more than an hour now um, and there's a lot more that I can share about learning to learn online. So you'll be able to contact me at this point. I'm going to turn it back to Dave, please. And I'm going to do the handoff back to Saurabh. I think Saurabh, you're going to take us to the next part. So back over to awesome. you, Saurabh. Yeah. Thank you so much. That was awesome information that our students were able to get from the experts, the subject matter experts today. We have hundreds uh, of questions that have come in, um, uh, but I do want to talk about online for a second here. Um, so uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, through the pandemic, Fanshawe has moved online and have continued to be online during the summer. So what we wanted to do for you today is um, give you a sense of what online looks like. And that's why uh, Sandra took you to the, through, through the presentation of what supports are available. Um, for our future September uh, and winter students, there is, uh, Fanshawe does not have an official announcement uh, at this stage. Fanshawe is working on a plan. So that's something I wanted to assure you. Uh, but this shows off how ready Fanshawe is to support students through uh, any mode of learning uh, that needs to happen as well. So uh, Dave, if you have anything to add, I have questions that I'm going through and I will start fielding questions to you. But Dave, if you wanted to Say yep, something so, about that. Yep. So just uh, we're working on uh, different scenarios. We're doing some scenario planning, which is again something you'll you'll uh, experience in the IT world as well. So we're looking at uh, different possible uh, scenarios in terms of how we go back uh, and when we go back. Uh, and obviously, uh, our plan is based on uh, making sure that our staff, faculty, and students are as safe as possible as our primary objective. Uh, and so we are obviously, as you know, we're not all on the same pandemic schedule. 
So right now we are all facing the fact that borders are kind of closed and flights are few and far between. Uh, we are looking at uh, possible uh, options for the fall that include some limited return to a physical presence. Maybe we start online. We're exploring all those options right now. And as Saurabh said, we haven't got an official position on it. So we're just going through that what if kind of planning uh, and uh, trying to figure out what's the best option uh, to go forward. In order, and uh, obviously with the view of keeping uh, everyone as safe as possible. So uh, we will hopefully have some, uh, some further announcements over the next few or several weeks going forward. But for now, for the summer term, uh, we are all online, as you figured out. And uh, for those programs that absolutely need a face-to-face -face delivery component, so some of our networking courses where you have to actually uh, stand in front of the equipment racks and cable things and that sort of stuff, we're looking at what the best options are to make those things happen. But uh, obviously our first priority is for the safety of everyone, um, uh, your side and our side, and uh, we're gonna proceed along, uh, along those lines. So that's it. Awesome, thank you, Dave. Yeah. The first question, uh, let's, uh, there are many questions. I've tried to compile all these questions into one. And I think when one asks a question, many are thinking that question. So it's great for uh, that students are asking these questions. The first question, and uh, I'll address it to, to Dave is, about the IT industry in the city of London. So could you talk a little bit about that and what do the companies look like? What kind of companies are there in IT uh, jobs? Of course, our students are not restricted to London, but they do have a question about London and maybe you can talk about Ontario as well. Sure. So uh, London's a, uh, by most accounts and certainly by India's account, a small town. We're about uh, 400,000 people. Uh, so a mere drop in the bucket, uh, but uh, we have a, uh, a fairly well-established installed base of IT companies, everything from 3M to General Dynamics who work in the defense industry to London, you know, banking, finance, and secure insurance is, uh, plays a big role. So there's a lot of IT infrastructure built up there. We have uh, companies like uh, Autodata, which does uh, information for the automotive industry, uh, we have ZTR, which does the internet of things in the, in the transportation space. Uh, we have a fair bit of, of digital media companies. London is known as a video game development uh, town or city. Uh, and so we have a fair breadth of, of companies here. Uh, as in many places, uh, employment and job openings are, uh, are sometimes tough to, to come by. Uh, and uh, if you've spoken to any sort of... Uh, employment counselor or those sorts of people who know the industry, they will say that the vast majority of jobs are jobs that are unadvertised. Uh, the City of London has been stating that we have up to 5,000 jobs monthly that do not get filled, uh, but it's in various sectors, everything from entry level positions right through to senior management. Uh, and so depending on the sector you're in, um, you know, the jobs are there, but sometimes they may be difficult to find, as is true in many cities. You know, the typical comparator for most people in Canada is Toronto. Oh, let's move to Toronto because everything is going to be so much more plentiful. And certainly the number of, of options in terms of openings may be uh, more plentiful, but you're also dealing with a different uh, kind of market, a much larger market also. So um, some things to consider. London offers a tremendous uh, lifestyle opportunity. It's a great city, banking, finance, uh, industry, insurance, as I said a very uh, well-established uh, healthcare infrastructure and some really key IT industries in and around the, the region as well. So. Awesome, thank you, uh, Dave. Now there are specific questions coming in mm -hmm. for programs uh, specifically. The first question I have uh, is around SST. So this postgraduate program, um, uh, does it focus on automation testing or what, like, what kind of testing uh, does the program focus on? Well, we do both uh, automated testing and manual testing. Uh, we are, like I said uh, earlier, uh, focusing on some of the new uh, uh, technologies that are, out, that are out there for automated testing, but we do have a, an entire course focused on automated testing. Uh, manual testing is done uh, and focused on a lot in the first semester when we talk about the test methodologies. Uh, but in the second semester, there's an entire course uh, just focused on automated testing. So, yes, and we keep up to date with the, the new technologies that are there. So there are going to be plenty of opportunities to do some automated testing. 
Thank you, Mike. The next question is for ISM, Information Security Management Program. Uh, and the question is, how do I prep myself? How do I prepare myself for uh, my upcoming program? Uh, is there an online thing that they can do or are there other certifications that they can look up and do before starting the program just to prepare themselves for the program? That's a that's an interesting question, and and it's a it's a challenging one to to answer because in the ISM program we cover a number of different topics, and I think the biggest thing that you can come in with is is experience, or if you are a little light on the IT experience, take some time and look at look at uh, opportunities to to practice skills, uh, look at places where you can uh, maybe do some, uh, look at YouTube where you can do some free learning uh, opportunities. That will just build that foundation because in ISM we start at foundation and we work our way up. So, but it is always beneficial to have some, uh, some additional uh, IT experience coming in. So again, look at those, look at those resources that will give you that, give you that base, uh, that foundational experience. And that's just gonna help you uh, move forward in the program that much better. Awesome. Sure. Thank you. And sorry, Sandra. can I add something to that that I think would be helpful? Because when we're thinking about um, any kind of global skills, no matter where you are in the world, those skills um, that employers are looking for everywhere, things like, are you paying attention to deadlines? Are you able to keep track of multiple, maybe competing deadlines? So maybe you're taking five or six courses at a time. Um, and back to what Stuart said, uh, are you able to zero in on a project or assignment, for example, or, or zero in on something that you need to uh, pay attention to and then you know, wrap that up and get something done and shift gears to something else. Because when you're taking five or six courses at one time, that's a skill that you need that often mimics what would be expected of you from an employer to meet those um, multiple, sometimes competing deadlines. So thinking about those skills um, that are generic, like time management, for example, I think are, are really important things to work on. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sandra. I do have a plug in here for uh, another session that Panshaw International is holding tomorrow, but it is absolutely uh, relevant for students who would be looking at jobs in our uh, city, in our province, in our country. Uh, we are doing a joint session tomorrow, uh, Friday. The, the session's name is Fanshaw and London's Career Advantage. The session is hosted by myself and uh, LEDC, London Economic Development Corporation. Uh, that session specifically is going to talk about the industries in the city and IT being such an important industry for the city of London, Ontario. There is a big focus on digital creative uh, sector in the city. So students who have questions about the industry, that's, that'll be a really useful session for you to attend as well. Uh, you can find details on our LinkedIn, Facebook and Instagram channel of Fanshaw International. So that's a quick plug in for that. Uh, the next question I have is for information technology infrastructure uh, program. Uh, so Dave, yep. I'll address that to you. Sure. Uh, is there C or C++ languages in this program um, in ITI? Yeah, no, no, there aren't. So the, the, the extent of the program we do is more focused on the database area. Um, so we're not explicitly going to go through any, any really you know, hardcore C or C++ coding, I think uh, probably I would look to, to Mike's program for, for those sorts of skills. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, next question is uh, for uh, software testing. So Mike Clarkson, if you can answer that. The question is around what language in coding, because there was a, a course called Coding for Test, I believe. Yes. So the question is coming in, what kind of language are they using for coding? Uh, we're using uh, Java. We start at a very introductory level, get you up to a medium level. Uh, we're not geared to making programmers out of you. We're just giving you a basic understanding of the foundation, uh, foundations of programming so that uh, when you are doing testing, you can kind of understand where the, the, the developers are coming from. And uh, you, know, you can focus a little bit more on that. But yeah, it's Java that we start with and uh, we get you up to an intermediate level uh, when we're done. Awesome. The next question is for CPA. So uh, Mike Feeney, if you can answer that. The question is around success of students in getting co-ops in, in CPA. Uh, so if you can add anything to that. 
Yeah, um, for a number of years, we always had more uh, jobs than co-ops. Uh, enrollment's gone up quite a bit, so there's a lot more competition. Uh, having high enrollment's a, you know, a good problem to have. The students still seem to um, uh, not struggle, but th they have to interview well, right? So uh, I get students, especially in the first co-op, coming to me saying, oh, I didn't get a co-op and I'll listen to them. But then it's kind of crazy because a lot of times students will say, well, I applied to one job. And I'm like, sorry, what? And I don't know why, you know, it's, you know, they, or they wanted this one particular job and then they didn't get it. So they turned down all the other jobs. I'm like, well, what are you doing, man? Like, um, so it doesn't seem to be a problem. That seems to be pretty consistent. Although it is, uh, the whole IT sector is, is growing, right? So uh, the industry is always playing catch up with that. But yeah, right now it's pretty much if, if you, don't tank the interview. I know, I don't know if, if you don't do terrible at the interview, you're going to get a co-op for sure. Yeah. It's not awesome. a guarantee though. So. <laughs> of course. Thank you. Um, so next question is around HSY, uh, Health Systems Management. Kathy, uh, you did talk about what other programs could, um, could, could they look at. There, there is a student who's talking about the new healthcare administration management program uh, that the college has versus the health systems management program. Health system management program has been running at Pancha for a, for a really, really long time. Um, so Kathy, I don't know if you're able to differentiate. I can talk about healthcare admin management, but maybe talk about health system management. And I'll actually give you a two-parter question because there is another question around HSY around good fit as a second program, which you did speak about in your slides as well. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm not 100% familiar with the new, um, uh, the new program, but I do understand that it is a two-year uh, post-grad diploma program. Um, and I understand that it's targeted at the overall management within the healthcare system. Uh, rather than the um, focus in the HSY program is on data and analytics and how to use, how to extract, how to store safely, how to extract, and how to use that data in order to assist decision makers to make the proper decisions. So much of our healthcare system in Canada is tied to analytics, our funding, our, um, the processes that are put in place. They're all tied to those uh, statistics and data. And, and so the HSY program focuses on the data itself, how to store it, how to manage it, how to extract it, and how to make it meaningful for decision makers. The new program, I understand, is a much broader overall management but you'll have to speak to that. Absolutely, thank you, Kathy. Uh, that's, uh, that's exactly right. The healthcare admin management is more of a overall coordination management program, whereas HSY has this uh, fantastic uh, niche, uh, specialization within the, uh, the, health, the health IT, health uh, data analytics area. Uh, Kathy, also like uh, about the second program, um, you have, so in your experience with your students, have you seen students do another IT program and then students do also maybe a health care, health uh, kind of program as a second program in your experience for that? Yeah, uh, we've seen students come into our program from other certificate programs, whether it's uh, project <laughs> management or even pharmacy technician uh, programs, um, uh, operations management, and then they've come into health systems management. Um, and we've seen program or students graduate from ours and move on to other programs. I think for international students, if their goal is the permanent residency, then, then it is attractive to take more than one uh, program. All I can um, offer is that I would hope that, that the students think carefully and match their current education and experience with the path they're choosing as they go forward. If they already have a health background, then the HSY program and then maybe project management, depending on where they want to go, or even one of our further IT programs to, to drill down more into the IT um, uh, aspect of data management. Um, 
I, I think the, if, they're, if they're thoughtful and uh, focused when they're making those choices, then that'll be to their best advantage when they're finished and they're out there looking for employment. I can jump uh, in for a eat. sec. Uh, um, Dave. The, uh, we've had a few of our SST students also go into HSY as well. So we've had, had some crossover for some of our, our more core IT uh, uh, focused programs. And just uh, two words on the healthcare admin uh, management program. It's really more focused on the business and, and leadership fundamental side of things. So the students coming out of that program might be looking at something in terms of a, a middle or maybe upper middle level management kind of role. Uh, but it is, it is largely uh, more of a, of a business focus, whereas we tend to focus more on the actual actionable content, et cetera, and, and those sorts of skills. Awesome. Thank you, Dave. Um, so, uh, Sandra, the next question is for you. There were many questions coming about online. And as, as we've already said, uh, uh, whenever Fancho makes a decision uh, or has an announcement around online, we will work with you and communicate with you. Uh, but Sandra, the question is specifically around exams and like if this goes online or the students uh, in summer that we have online already, how do exams happen for them or have, have the exams shifted and how they were happening? Uh, so if you can talk about that. Yes, absolutely. That's a good question. Uh, there are a few different things that are happening and it really does depend on what course, what program you're in, and then each course could be different within the program you're taking. So Fanshawe has in the past um, used live online proctoring services where students pay a very minimal fee um, to take an exam online in what's called a live proctored environment. So the student is logging in um, to their computer, they're authenticating themselves using a student ID, for example, that's compared with information that their faculty member has passed on to the live proctor. Um, it may sound complex, but it's actually quite a simple, straightforward system that allows students to be live proctored. Uh, what we've done for the summer semester is many of the courses are using um, browser technology, so a Respondus browse, lockdown browser technology that some of you may have heard of um, to support that kind of learning. Another piece of technology called Respondus Monitor to help monitor students as they're taking exams. Uh, and, a, and a third way is that a lot of or a number of the exams and assessments that students are going to be expected to take will not require those kinds of systems. There'll be different kinds of testing. So maybe not your traditional true, false and multiple choice kinds of exams, but rather application kinds of experiences where students are being asked to submit an assignment or apply their learning in a certain way and then submit that to a submissions drop box through Fanshawe Online, for example. And then your faculty member, of course, is going to go through a process of authenticating your work, right? We have many ways to authenticate student work and, and um, unique work and um, academic integrity is very important at Fanshawe College and something we pride ourselves on and we know our students do as well. And it's important to that we uphold that when we're thinking about um, the impressions that our employers have of our programs. So if students are thinking about that, know that we we do take academic integrity seriously. We have ways to authenticate student work, but at the end of the day, we um, support our students in making sure you have tools that you need to get those tests and exams done and ways to um, uh, uh, assess students in other ways that aren't maybe the traditional true false multiple choice tests. Awesome, thank you, Sandra. Uh, what I always like saying to students is um, uh, your time at Fanshawe, uh, treat it like you are working. When you're working, your company would expect you to come up with original work original content. So that is the expectation that your professors have as well um, uh, during your time, your program at Fanshawe. Uh, the next question coming in is for technical systems specialist program. And this question has come in uh, multiple times. Uh -oh. um, what uh, coding language or skills uh, should the students brush up? So like prepare for before joining this program. I love how students are asking questions about how can we be successful in this program even before we start? What should we prep with? 
So Dave, if you have suggestions about technical system specialist. Okay, so I'm just gonna to answer it broadly right now. One of the easiest things you can do for any program you're contemplating taking, if you wanna do any extra work or find out more details, take a look at the website. Go to the specific program offering, pull down the, click on the section that talks about courses, read the course descriptions, and that may give you a better sense of what uh, you may need to put some extra effort into before you come here. If there's any, you know, if you're, if you're not sure about some aspect of one of the courses, maybe that's an opportunity for you to take some time and brush up on it. For technical systems specialist, we're going to certainly continue with uh, some of the work that uh, we're doing in SST with Java. We're, uh, be, be, you know, full disclosure, be very honest with you, we're in the midst of writing the curriculum uh, and getting it all sorted out. Uh, so we're, we're, you know, certainly there'll be some, uh, some coding efforts around SQL on the database side of things. There'll be some Java. Uh, we're looking at uh, some of the, uh, the, the operating system kind of things. I, am, I, I don't want to, to say anything now and then uh, we take a little bit different direction. So it's still a work in progress, but I would say watch the space uh, and uh, you know, the, so for now, the, the standard things that, that you can expect are, are uh, things like coding for tests or a variant of that as applied to the analyst side of things. Uh, and also, uh, certainly part of the analyst role is going to be uh, doing that database design and development. So certainly SQL will play a, a role in that as well. Awesome. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Um, there, there are questions. There is a question coming in around cybersecurity. Um, so uh, the question is, it's, this is three-year advanced diploma. Right. Are there university pathways, direct or indirect, available uh, oh. for cybersecurity? And here, maybe you can talk about the CPA yep. pathway as well. So uh, I'm going to hand it over to Mike to talk about the CPA. But before we do that, so hang on, hang on, Mike. Um, there are pathways established for the, for the cyber program. Uh, so uh, one of the, the value adds that Fanshawe has is we have a lot of really great relationships with other colleges and universities internationally. And one of our, our partners, which is preeminent in the field of cybersecurity is Finland. And so we have a pathway with them where they will take our students and uh, uh, allow them to complete a cybersecurity degree as a result of that. We are working uh, on uh, considerations for our own bachelor's degree uh, in, in the college. That is uh, a number of years away. So I wouldn't be packing your bags just yet uh, in terms of getting into that program. But uh, we are looking at, uh, at all those sorts of uh, laddering and pathways and all those sorts of things with our programs. So right now, the only one that, that we know as a definite is, is in Finland. But obviously, part of the role of our, our outreach folks at the college is to look at what relationships we can create and how we can uh, provide our students with other options coming out of our programs or coming into our programs. So uh, uh, it's a, a bit of a, of a nebulous answer. Uh, if you really like Finland, have we got a deal for you? But uh, obviously uh, we'd like to keep you here. Uh, and so that's part of the impetus for us considering creation of our, the creation of our own bachelor's degree. Uh, because obviously uh, when you come here, we feel that we have a tremendous student experience available to you. Uh, and uh, coupling the education you will learn in our in our diploma programs and advanced diploma programs, for us it makes perfect sense to to extend that relationship and to to keep you here and allow you to graduate with a, a full fledged degree in information technology. So uh, that's the that's the path we're taking. And uh, Mike, if you wanted to jump in on anything, Mike Feeney, please go ahead. Sure. Yeah. So you're talking about progression out of yeah cyber. Yeah, a number of years ago, the uh, there, there wasn't a whole lot, and well, like ten years ago. Now it's, it's kind of wild how many places are reaching out and these crazy opportunities. Um, yeah, there's a number of uh, uh, paths out of the computer programmer analyst program. Like, I don't know, they like like eight or twelve yeah. of them, possibly, yeah. depending on where you, from how far afield you go. A lot of the students that are local to us tend to go to Western, which is the local university, and there is an articulation there. Uh, ironically, it's kind of the longest, yeah. <laughs> the longest yeah. process, and I can say that because I graduated from there. But anyway, um, and then there's other ones too, like, um, for example, you can take the CPA, the Computer Program Analyst course, articulate into the game course instead of the sixth semester, and then take, uh, then you 
get two thirds of credit towards a master's degree. So basically within five years or five and a half years, in theory, you can go from getting two diplomas and a master's degree, which is, it's kind of amazing. And something like that, if you had mentioned that even six, seven years ago, people would have thought you were, you were crazy, that there's no way you could get that much education in that short space of time. So yeah, there's a whole bunch of them. Awesome. Uh, thank you. Um, there are there is this question has come in multiple times. Uh, the question is comparing information security management and network security architecture program. So Stuart, if do you want to answer that? Uh, Stuart, we can't hear you. Uh, I think how's um, that? There we How's go. That? There we go. So the network security, uh, so that's always a challenging program uh, or question because the network security management is focused more on the management side of IT. So within the ISM, there are courses such as IT auditing. We, we look at security planning. Uh, we've got the CISSP, which I had mentioned earlier. Whereas, uh, so we've got the digital forensics. So we look at the, the management side of, of that, but we also have technical courses in there as well. We get into the NSA type courses. That's where we look at, at the, we look at wireless. We look at, you know, how do we secure networks that more on the technical side. So there's kind of, that's kind of how we've differentiated the two programs is one is, is, has a little more management focus. The other one has a little more technical focus. And that's kind of, but there is technical and there is management in both. So that's, it's kind of a, it's, it, it's a hard question to answer because there, there are similarities between the two programs, but again, the probably the easiest way is more management and then more technical. Awesome. Thank you. That's, that's great because a lot of students have that question for Not us surprised. as well. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. That's, that's great. So I'm just looking for the next questions. Um, so there are a couple of questions which are specific to international. So let me try to answer these questions right now. Uh, so there are questions around, uh, in some countries, visas are not being processed right now. Um, I would encourage students to apply for visas online. Uh, the complete process cannot be done online, but the application for visas can be done online. Uh, of course, there is health uh, um, testing and there is uh, biometrics testing, which needs to be done in person. But our hope is uh, soon that would be available as well. But I would encourage students to apply online for their visas while in-person uh, offices of, of the Canadian immigration are not working. In, in some countries, they are working. In some countries, they are not. The second question, which is international specific uh, that I get, uh, that I'm getting is around Duolingo. A lot of the English testing is closed uh, around the world. Um, so IELTS, IELTS, which is generally the go-to for students, is not available in many countries. So don't worry. Uh, if you go to fanshawe.ca slash international, you will see Duolingo is now accepted by Fanshawe and IELTS Indicator, which is also all completely online, is accepted by Fanshawe. So you can find out details on fanshawe.ca slash international for those kind of questions. Okay, so the next question coming in is for is around uh, extra certifications uh, like CISM for information security management course. So um, uh, if, I don't know if Stuart or they wanted to answer that, are there additional certifications in ISM and is CISM one of them or is there a different certification uh, that's there for uh, ISM? So my, my vote is that, uh, that Stuart handle this one. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> yeah, no worries. <laughs> so the uh, so within within ISM, we've we've we look at so some of the things we we the courses we do are not directly certification courses, but what we do is we prep you to be able to take the certifications. And after you do a course in ISM or NSA, let's take the CISSP course or the ethical hacking uh, course as an example you need a period of study before you sit those exams. It's not a walk, a, a, you finish the course at, at Fanshawe and you, and you walk in and you can sit that exam directly. There is a period of time you need to, to, to take to do that. So in the case of the CISSP prep, we look at the whole CISSP, uh, all of the eight domains, all of the topics covered in there. That is a very theory heavy course. And one of the, uh, but, 
the outcome of that is the CISSP is one of the most challenging certifications to get in security, but is most one of the most valuable as well. So there is, so that's one of the reasons it's in, it actually crosses both ISM and NSA because we see an extreme value in that uh, in that course. And the students that come out, they they see a benefit to uh, to being able to have prepped for CISSP and to eventually sit that course when they have the required experience. As far as CEH, again, all the technical courses we do, you can there um, and the topics that are covered, putting all those together and through a period of additional study after you've done the course, then you can go sit additional um, certifications such as CCNA or CEH or other certifications such as those. Okay, awesome. Um, so we're gonna take a last one or two questions. I'm just skimming through the questions that we have. There are a lot of students who are asking for content that we've already covered. Uh, I will tell students that everyone who's attended the session will get a recording of the session, a link for a recording of the session and uh, a PowerPoint. So you can go through that uh, content. Uh, we would not be repeating, repeating uh, uh, a lot of the content that has already been covered. Uh, what I'm gonna do at this stage is um, um, the, que the questions that I have, I think we've kind of covered fairly broadly. Um, uh, if uh, Dave and uh, professors that we have here have one or two key pieces of advice for students looking at international education here in Canada in terms of academically, um, like what are the best practices and things like that. If each of you maybe want to add like one thing that you would advise for our students? Sure, uh, let me jump in. I think the, the first most critical thing is attend your classes. Right. Actually, you know, live in that moment and, and show up and, and attend, listen, read uh, when you're given an assignment. You know, part of the easy part for us is to discount the submission that you give us because you haven't read something or you haven't done something. So make sure you read every single word on that assignment. Right. Make sure you read everything in a test. Make sure you pay attention in class. Go through the material. Um, I, I recognize that not everyone uh, who comes to any college abroad is there primarily for an education. There are obviously many different motives, but think of it as a two for one deal. While you're here working on what you really want to do in life, why don't you get an education by the way? So, um, you know, we, we put a lot of, of thought and effort into our programs. Uh, we try and focus them to help you get a job. Um, these are all things that will undoubtedly help, help you in your, in your quest to possibly become a permanent resident and a citizen and so forth and so on. But, uh, you know, uh, th there, there is no wasted time here. Uh, so make the most of what you can. We are all here. We are all committed to helping you be a success. And so reach out to us if you have issues, if you have questions, if you have concerns. Uh, one of the things I like to say is that we will not work harder than you to make you graduate, right? And so, you know, we can, we can and we will only do so much, but uh, this ain't kindergarten anymore. You're all adults, right? You have responsibility for your own future. We're here to facilitate things as much as we can, but uh, you need to commit as well. This is your future. So uh, we're here to help you. We're overjoyed to see you. I can't wait to meet you in person, if that's possible. Um, and uh, we will do everything we can uh, to make it work. But uh, we expect you to come to the table as well. That, that, that's my, my soapbox uh, delivery. So I'll step off and let someone else jump on. I'd like to jump in to uh, I, I just basically uh, to talk about one of our students, just to give you an idea what uh, you can expect. She was a mother of two children. Uh, she came here, uh, left her husband back home. He looked after things there while she was getting her education. Uh, this student uh, graduated from the SST program, uh, went on to a co-op at Good Life Fitness in London. Uh, she got a full-time job uh, once she completed that. She became a Canadian citizen and she used the information she learned in the SST program to write and pass her ISTQB exam. So the point behind that is that uh, you get out of life what you put in it. 
So when you come here, put everything you have into this. This is your full-time job while you're in Canada, or even if you're doing this online from a remote location. Uh, so you really need to put the effort into it. As Dave said, uh, you must work harder at it than we do. So uh, that's my advice to anybody. Uh, it doesn't matter what your situation is. You can do it. It just depends on how much you put into it. I'd like to, I'd like uh, <laughs> going to chime in just for a minute and bounce off something that you said, Dave, and that is, I think students, um, you come for the education, but at Fanshawe, you're going to stay for the people. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know anyone that's ever said, gee, that was like, I remember after I graduated, like that was the best Excel assignment I ever experienced. Right. Uh, they rather say things like, wow, Kathy was the best Excel teacher I ever had. So I, I want to assure you that Fanshawe understands that it's your relationship with the people that are going to help you with the learning. So while you're coming here to learn and to educate yourself, it's going to be at the end of the day, the relationships that you create with all of these people here and the others that you'll encounter as you journey through Fanshawe, whether you're online and you're meeting us like this, or hopefully we're face to face again and we're meeting in the halls of the college, whichever you choose, whichever is a match for you, you're going to end up staying for the people because it's these people that will connect you right to the tools and experience and the learning that you need to want to do more and want to continue. And I'll just, I'll just jump in quickly. Um, many students that I uh, interact with, um, are um, they start from a, a place of discouragement when they're thinking about looking for employment. And, and my advice to you now and to those students when I'm meeting with them is, please don't ever underestimate the skills and experience that you're bringing into this program and into this country and into this college when you arrive here. Don't discount that. And just because when you graduate, you don't yet have Canadian experience, um, don't let that discourage you. Put all of your, all of who you are together into a package for your application for work. Anyone else? I'm gonna add my two cents too then. Um, okay. Yeah, downtown campus. Yeah, can you hear me? But you're frozen, Michael. Can you hear me? There we go. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Isn't technology wonderful? <laughs> and we can blame all of you collectively for this because in our eyes, you created technology. Am I back? Uh, School yeah. of IT. There's never no. an IT guy when you need him. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, is my, I don't see my, um... all right. Uh, any, uh, any, uh, anyone else who wants to add Okay, Mike is here. I see Mike now. Um, does he want to? No, I think he's still frozen. Yeah. All right. Um, that's okay. Um, if any of you else, uh, other have any parting words, that's great. Um, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll jump yes, in here it. if you don't mind. Uh, I just like to say that, um, reinforce what everybody else has said, but one of the things that uh, I find is that when the students who have graduated and they come back and tell us how they're doing and where they've ended up and and that it's nice to see that how successful that uh, that our students have uh, have been out of our programs and the uh, and and honestly I'm, I'm I know I'm only speaking for myself but that gives me great pleasure in what I do here and and being able to help you guys that are new to the country and being able to establish that foothold and seeing where you end up. Yeah. Awesome. 
Thank you so much, everyone. This is an amazingly informative session. I think students really love hearing from their future professors, their program coordinators, and their associate dean. Uh, so thank you so much for taking this effort. All the students, thank you for joining us today. Um, I know in many places it's almost midnight that you're joining us from. So thank you for joining us. We really look forward to welcoming you here in Canada, in our city, and in our college. Uh, please stay in touch. Uh, all of you will get a recording of this uh, uh, session and a PowerPoint. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us this morning. Have a wonderful day. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. I, I know. <laughs>